What we do sometimes with stories is we'll, we'll actually take ideas from around the company. And one came out um, a number of years ago for a, um, a, a show called Sherlock Holmes. We really wanted to tell a story about friendship and felt like you know, using that dynamic of Sherlock and, and Bob would be you know, a, great, a great way to, to, to teach friendship. It's been a while since Bob and Larry have been on the screen together. You know, they, in fact, there's not very many shows that the roles really are suitable for Bob and Larry together, that just, you know, that, that chemistry is particular and, and, and doesn't fit every story that we do, but this is one that it did. It can only mean that this is a lot harder than it looks. Anytime you do a mystery, there's, there's more dimension to it than a typical story uh, because you've got to also have some sort of, whether it's a crime or just some little something that's a mystery has got to be woven in at the same time while we're trying to teach you know, a lesson. Come back and fight like a, a pea! The story of Don Quixote is actually a story that I've wanted to do since we started Veggie Tales. When we figured out, okay, we're gonna do a story on friendship and Sherlock is gonna be, you know, the main title, it made a lot of sense to do, you know, the, the Don Quixote type story, you know, also as a friendship, you know, as a, as a companion. Started talking to Bob Lee about it and he actually came up with the idea of the Asparagus of La Mancha. I, for many years, caught on that you know idea of Bob Quixote just because I like the sound of it. But as it turned out, it worked out much better doing it this way. We've been doing a lot of fairly complex shows, uh, and you know, every once in a while, it's nice to step back and do a show that has a fairly simple, you know, approach visually. We wanted to make sure that you know the dream world that Don went into looked very much different than his than the real world. You know pull in this, both the Spanish flavor and this just really weird, you know, feeling in this world and just a great contrast to that, you know, waking up from that dream into his real world of the kitchen. Two cows still mooing and the hail Caesar, hold the bird. I don't know what most of them mean. Oh, the diner talk. But I honestly didn't catch one of them. It seems like it should be shorthand, you know, like a way to say it faster. Noah's boy on bread, which is a ham sandwich, you know, it's just as long to say Noah's boy on bread, you know, and frog sticks, french fries. I learned a lot of diner talk in, you know, working with the show. Yikes, what's in this stuff? It's really quite hot. It's a habanero, it's gotta be habanero. I think those are the hottest peppers known to man. We're not sure exactly. Spicy food really isn't a part of Spanish, you know, cuisine. I just want everybody to know that we know that. So, you know, it's more of kind of taken on more of a Tex-Mex flavor, <laughs> so. It was nice having this Spanish twist to the music. It uh, brought something new to the table. Being able to use like, you know, you know, kind of that that traditional Spanish sound and that flamenco guitar and then, you know, with the singer over top of that. By the way, if Mike's wearing a similar shirt to me, it's because he called me, I didn't call him. But I love how these uh, mysterious elements in the dream come together and just create this fanciful world of, of his dreamscapes. I always want to talk about checkers when we get to Asparagus La Mancha because I learned something through the course of making this show. Most of the people working on the show do not know how to play checkers. Look at the board. It's not even close to set up. <laughs> <laughs> Checkers, you play only on one color. You only play on, on the black squares. Yeah! What if we turned the Sherlock Holmes thing on its ear? And what if, what if Watson was really, you know, the one always solving the cases, you know, but Sherlock was always taking the credit for it? Yeah, we've been to London a few times, yeah, and we always love going back to London. I mean, we've been there for Dr. Jiggle, we've been there for, um, you know, the Easter special and the Christmas special and, and back again for Sherlock. The golden rule is do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. We put that into a little metaphor, the actual golden ruler, you know, which was this artifact that they were looking for. But the reason it was so treasured is because of the advice that's inscribed on it. I really like the alley scene between, um, you know, Sherlock and Watson. Sherlock is beginning to get um, that, or he's hurting Watson's feelings, and it's beginning to dawn on him, and then he's interrupted again by, you know, these fans coming in, so he kind of reverts back to his old ways. This episode, both Sherlock and Asparagus of La Mancha took on a much more intimate flavor. Even more so in Sherlock, it all revolved around a solo violin and a pianist. We wanted to kind of get that kind of sad, 
kind of spooky, you know, violin sound. Whenever you can add a live instrument to, um, you know, sequenced bed, you know, it, it makes it feel like, you know, the whole the whole band is is a live orchestra, a live band. Whoa! Whoa! Well, we just had a P casting call. I just think it's funny that, you know, guarding Buckingham Palace is a bunch of French peas. Well, you had to have a strong neck to be able to hold that hat up. Ooh, I had a bad experience with brie cheese. I thought brie cheese was like moldy or something. When we wrapped the show in Toronto, um, we actually did, you know, brie cheese and baguettes for the crew, and it was really, really good brie cheese. To the gated community. That whole song idea kind of came up when, you know, we were moving and, you know, looking for houses and we saw all these different types of housing communities. And Well, I like to, I like to give Mike a hard time that it's about where he lives. <laughs> there he is! <laughs> you know, we went into this one gated community and it had a, you gotta go past the guard. On each house there's like a security, you know, uh, company, you know, sign. And then, what's more, you know, there's like a guy driving around making sure everything's okay. <laughs> you know, so it's just like, what are you afraid of? What's gonna happen here? So it's kind of just a, like, a, just a fun satirical poke, you know, did a similar thing with the sport utility vehicles. Well, our first criteria was that our guest artists have to have the initials MW. So we were only able to find Matthew Ward and Matthew West. It was really fun working with real singers <laughs> on stuff because you know we have our vegetable voices and we go in and you know we can get by singing as vegetables. You know Matthew West, he's got a neat story. I really appreciate the hard work he's put into learning to be a, a better songwriter, uh, you know, a performer, and I, I really admire his work. You know, bringing back vocal elements that he doesn't usually use on a contemporary Christian album these days. Matthew Ward was a real treat. I grew up uh, listening and going to see concerts by the second chapter of Acts. And of course he was the one of the vocalists in there, he and his two sisters. And so it's kind of always been a, a dream of mine. Boy, it'd be great to somehow work with Matthew one of these days. He couldn't have been more tickled to be able to do it for us. What are you doing? I'm doing this for your own good, Don. I need to stick by you and do what's best for you in your time of need. You know, I think it's a great episode for kids to learn how to be a good friend. You know, in Sherlock it's, um, you know, treating your friend like you want to be treated. And then in, in Asparagus of La Mancha, it's being loyal and, and, you know, looking out for your friend and doing what's best for them. Does he stick with this friend that everybody else is kind of mocking at this point and go join these other people, or does he stick with the friend that, you know, that, that he's had? But then also kind of that tough love of friendship where, you know, Don is, you know, hurting himself by, you know, his habit of eating hot spicy salsa before he goes to bed every night. Poncho actually, you know, leaves Don in jail, you know, without his salsa. He sort of is his tough love friendship and which ends up really, you know, being a great thing for Don. If you want somebody to be a good friend to you, you need to know how to be a friend to them. You know, be willing to share a toy, be willing to share some food, you know, everything not, not yours or mine or about me. Larry as Sherlock is taking the credit for, for, you know, all these cases and he's getting all the accolades and everybody's cheering for him as the great guy and Bob's, you know, as Watson is getting left out. Um, you know, and that's, that's Sherlock's big aha, you know, when he realizes that, wow, you know, Trout stole my idea and I wouldn't like that if somebody did that to me. Um, so he sees, you know, that, that he's been treating Bob that way. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, 17. Bob and Larry, um, you know, on the countertop, as they get this letter from Erica Bangaman, she asks, you know, what can I do to make friends? And, you know, and the answer is, well, the best way, you know, to, to make friends is to be a friend and, and really, you know, to, to be kind and, and compassionate and care about what others think and, and to be loyal. So I think that's a, it's a great lesson to learn uh, for kids to make friends.